What's up guys? Um, before I start this video, I just want to say hope y'all had a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to y'all out there. What's up guys? It's your boy Nathan DeBoss here back with another video. And today, I'm going to be giving you my reactions to Packers, Dolphins. So, 26 to 20 today. Um, Pretty thrilling win. But, let's... Talk about the first half first. I mean, our offense looked like shit. Let's put it that way. And our defense looked like shit. I mean, I can't believe we couldn't capitalize on a goal-to-go situation right after Keontae Nixon. I think it's Keontae or Keon. I, I, don't, I don't know which one. Nixon, he had a 93-yard kick return. And, couldn't, and we only got a field goal. And I think capitalizing in the red zone is definitely an issue right now. But I can't believe it took us four downs the next drive to even things up at 10. With a little check and release to Mercedes Lewis. It's, it's crazy stuff. But it's crazy. And then the pass defense, it looked like garbage. Especially that 84-yard touchdown, Jalen Waddle. I'm, I'm like, what the fuck are we thinking? And then we always break down and play soft coverage, and I just don't like that. But, yeah, so the first half was definitely a shit show for, for sure. Um, Definitely, we with that field goal, we got a little bit of momentum going into the locker room, being down by seven. I'm feeling, you know, I feel like if we just play a lot better pass defense and I mean our offense was okay for a while there was definitely some dysfunction especially when Rodgers overshot Christian Watson I was a little pissed about that call it's fourth and two you know running the ball with AJ Dillon up the middle probably would have been ideal but second half was it was definitely a tale of two halves for sure I'll give you that Offensively, I can't believe we went for it, like, fourth and one. We, uh, this is, like, serious. For the first time under Matt LaFleur, he actually went for a quarterback sneak for a change. Oh, my God. Finally. I'm like, I'm like, um, I just got a notification that the Bucks won. Tampa Bay, that is. I was I was just watching the game, and they were driving down field goal range, and, and as accurate as Ryan Suckup is, I'm like, and and the Cardinals had this game in almost good hands, but they shot themselves in the foot, and Tom Brady won again. So, like any game with the Bucks, I don't care if you win. Well, I just tell every team, I don't care if you win. I just want Tom Brady to lose. Because he gets bailed out with a lot of that shit. And then I'm like, and trying to think, oh, clutch time. Now I get the ball. And, and then the other team just fucking crumbles in the pieces. That is why I hate Tom Brady. It's because the team who... And Cardinals are like the Bucks, who are are who what we thought they were, and I don't want the Panthers to win the division. I mean, if they win next week, then they'll have that dead tiebreaker. Enough of that. But our red zone capitalization was kind of shit, except except that one time with AJ Dillon running it in. I think that there were definitely some opportunities where we definitely could have closed out the game for sure. But let's talk about the defense in the second half. Hold them to a missed field goal. Three interceptions. And those times we desperately needed them. Especially after Rodgers threw an interception to this undrafted rookie. I'm forgetting his name. It was a deep shot to Alan Lazard. And it definitely should have been pass interference. So the refs were... They were calling too many holding calls. And they were just kind of laissez-faire on the... Um, 
pass interference calls. I would say that. <laughs> but the defense really stood up in the second half. And I read an article that Jair Alexander was saying in a press conference that the, their defensive backs coach was yelling at them in the locker room to get their shit together. And guess what? That really motivated Jair. And guess what? To a to his stats, I was reading like reading something like man, his first and second half stats, man, those stats just he fell off to a fell off a cliff. Dolphins did not score in the second half. That's that's just crazy. But three interceptions, one by Jair which set up a field goal. Devondre Campbell, which later led to a field goal, and then Russell Douglas with the dagger. So talk about a defensive performance in the second half. So that is, it's definitely evident that this was a, definitely a game of two, a tale of two halves for sure. So th this ain't over yet. And moving forward, I was like, after the Lions and the Eagles, I'm like, throwing the towel. We're done for. We are not done for. We have won three in a row. And I am damn confident that we can beat the Vikings. If we can beat a team like the Dolphins. I know the Dolphins are in a bit of a slump. And to be fair, they've been playing some really good teams. They played the Niners, who are in playoff contention. The Chargers, um, the Bills, and then us and yeah the Dolphins have kind of been off lately I thought they were gonna beat the Niners since they were on a roll but and they had lost a full game where Tua played under center but well they did lose one game with Tua but Tua got knocked out of the game against the Bengals that is so from here you know how I made that video where we, where I said we, and what the help we need. All right, a lot of steps were completed. So the what the help we really needed was, well, what I said in that video is we need to win out. Commanders need to lose two of their last three, and Seahawks need to at least lose once. The lose once part, it's going. They lost. It, I don't care if the Seahawks win out at this point. And then the Lions, um, they lost to the Panthers. It definitely helps. So then it doesn't create confusion about if we were to tie them at 9-8. and eight, We would get the strength of victory tiebreaker. I just read about it. So I actually did a correction in the comment section. In the description, my bad. And then... The Commanders need to lose one of their last two. And the Brown, they have to either... And they're playing both games at home. Same with us. So the Browns have to pull off an upset. And the Cowboys, who knows if they'll have anything to play for. So actually, maybe I'm rooting for the Saints against the Eagles. I don't know. We'll just have to see. And I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not pretty unlikely that the Saints will win, but, I mean, this is proof right now that, like, any given Sunday, you know? So, definitely, the ball bounced our way any way, shape, and form on Saturday on Saturday's games because Seattle, Detroit, Washington, and the Giants, they all lost, and we won. So, everything played out perfectly this week. I don't know about next week, but... We'll see if the Browns can pull off an upset. We can beat the Vikings. I think we're then we'd be in the driver's seat. It doesn't matter if the Seahawks beat the Jets and the Lions beat the Bears. I mean, if that all that happens, great. Um, then we would be eight and eight. The Commanders would be seven, eight and one. The Lions and the Seahawks would be seven and nine. We basically control our own destiny. So that's how it can happen. And then we just have to beat the Lions. And then 
we're in the playoffs. It doesn't matter what the Giants really do necessarily, but, I mean, the Giants losing regardless would still help, of course. But we'll just have to see, th see what happens. And the Vikings definitely have had the ball bounce their way in every single one score game this year which is astounding cuz they were 6 and 8 in one score games and i think that's what really killed the vikings last year not trying to play devil's advocate there but it, it's just crazy the turnaround the vikings have had but the packers Definitely need this one if they want any chance at the playoffs. However, if if the Lions, Commanders, and Seahawks all lose, and the Packers somehow fuck it up against the Vikings, we can still technically make the playoffs. However, it's still going to take a lot of help. We would still need to win and... And then the Commanders would need to win. I mean, I don't know about the Seahawks because conference record is really a factor. But we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. So, that's all I got for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like and subscribe. Peace out. Go Pack Go.